The opening credit sequence is superbly edited and really plays into the 90s feel that I'll get into a little later. The murder setup cut with bars reloading ammo makes for a tense opening to set up the events of this film and Joe Kramer's score sets the mood for the entire movie. In a word, uneasy. This is a tough scene. It's supposed to be. Almost a full minute of looking through the scope at targets before firing that feels like 10 minutes from the stress. The reason it feels so real is because of the painstaking detail that went into every part. Two cameras were used, one for peripheral and one for the scope. And the cameramen took the same sniper course the actual shooters took to get the breathing and tremors right. And the entire twist is teased right there. Once he finds his real target, he goes back to the easiest shot he had already found for his cold shot. We've now crossed the 8 minute mark with no dialogue, yet the visuals have set up the story perfectly. We already know more of what's going on than most of the characters in the film. How do we find this Reacher? Obviously you don't find this guy unless he wants to be found. There's a Jack Reacher here to see you. Jack Reacher appreciates the importance of dramatic timing. Amy isn't slashing anyone's throat in this scene. We're meeting you. Honesty. Help I didn't him. come here to help him. I came here to bury him. First fun little subversion twist. Turning the super detective please super detect stuff that will save me cliche on its head. Reacher didn't even know that Barr had requested him. He was just showing up to make sure he was punished this time. Renee isn't strangling anyone to death in this scene. No small parts. James Martin Kelly puts his all into this scene. The tension build leaves you with anxiety long after she thinks she's safe. That's quality right there. Reacher has just spent the day reimagining the shooting. And it's not till Emerson mentions paying the meter being habit. that Reacher starts to imagine things differently. Because if Barr was doing things by habit, he wasn't setting up in the garage. I'm Sandy. So was I. Last week, on a beach in Florida. A little cringeworthy, but one of the best things about Reacher is his refusal to ever really answer a question or respond sincerely. You know why? Impeccable tailoring. What's the serial number on the rifle? What's the date on the quarter? He never picks a fight he can't win. Work for the Red Baron. He has a PhD in condescension. Stryker isn't adamantiuming anyone in this scene. I think it's partially the lack of background music or extra sound effects, but something about this first punch feels so realistic. Also completely incapacitates him with one elbow. But the whole fight is done so well. No close-up jump cuts. We see everything that happens. Also, the defense lab Casey fighting method allows assailants to attack more than one at a time. Yeah, I guess he's all right. Jack Reacher's workout routine. Crosshair curtains and blood spatter wallpaper. I'd shoot these fingers off before the frostbite could turn to gangrene. If the Zek isn't a throwback to 80s and 90s cliche villains, I don't know what is. The eye, the insane backstory he tells people to intimidate them, or just mess with them, I guess. Bullet barrier shadowing. Bar consistently filled his tank on Saturday and again on Sunday. He took a long drive almost every weekend. The match level gun range? It's these intuitive little connections that Reacher puts together that make this detective story so fun. <laughs> Get it? I said use a default auto parts store, not default auto parts. Just don't hurt me. Sandy, sit down. Following instructions. Jack Reacher's biggest skill, being in a small bathroom fighting morons. Now that's using your... his... Their noggins. Also brutal. Am I stealing your car? Use it as long as you like. Generosity. You're blown. Lawyers running the license plates. <laughs> Tiny detail. This guy has passed the Zex test once. Can he do it again? Four random people to hide one specific target. This. This pseudo discovery that should have been a relatively simple connection. They make it compelling. This movie brings me right back to the 90s in a good way. I haven't seen it in years, but I can't help but be reminded of the Pelican Brief. Again, in the best way possible. I can't do this anymore. Thanks for the coffee, Counselor. Ooh, burn. Bringing it all the way back to the beginning when he didn't believe her. Thanks for the coffee, Counselor. Someone who could kill that girl with one punch. Are you with the guy in 11 or 9? Ernie Johnson. Man, you really got to know your Yankee second baseman to follow this movie. You'll see. Also, a little nod to the book readers, since Reacher is supposed to be 6'5". Just another car chase, right? Nope. No green screen, no stunt driving, and only one process trailer, where the actor is on a rig, not actually driving. I mean, that's all Tom Cruise. These pan-up shots are so awesome. <laughs> I'm done with this now. Helping a stranger. Robert Duvall is always a win. Seeing these two together again warms the heart. That's your mulligan, Mr. Ward. Play ball! Ha! Thought I wouldn't recognize a Yankee second baseman from 1925. Love that Reacher doesn't touch the targets. He's already thinking about Jai's fingerprints. One who switched the targets on the range. Maybe Barr let him. I never saw one real shooter who would do that for his own mother. 
And Jai was playing the long, long game. Highways no one uses. They're like a cancer. What an exposition hide inside a red herring reveal. Lawyer's all yours. Second thought, I'd like to kill you. He plays this so perfectly, taking the control back. Risky, sure, but he knows they need him dead, so he has all the power. You think I'm a hero? I am not a hero. I mean to beat you to death and drink your blood from a boot. That's an amazing line. Maybe the best line in the film, but man, Tom Cruise doesn't even care. Kudos on this shot. The centering yourself shot before battle is usually reserved for the hero, but even villains need to clear their heads. This was a bad idea. More honesty. Talk about claustrophobia. Who doesn't love a good sniper showdown? Trying to find each other with sound and muzzle flashes, Robert Duvall is shooting with his eyes closed for some reason? Questioning your life choices. The behind spotlight lighting in this set piece is something special. You know what? I'm calling it from here on out. As far as film tropes go, final fights in the rain are always a win. All right, I'm removing a win for this. There are a million explanations, but none of them really fit Jack Reacher. He doesn't care about honor or a fair fight or proving he's the better man. He should have just shot Jai, or at least knocked him out and tied him up, or pulled the trigger and been out of bullets. That would have been easy enough. That being said, this fight is awesome. In the rain, again, very few cuts, extremely realistic and not very choreographed feeling brawl. And in Reacher's defense, I think he was pretty positive he could beat Jai. I guess his name is Charlie. Does anyone ever call him that? Also, screams of pain cut short would tend to strike fear into the surviving enemies. At least Emerson, which would throw him off balance. So another reason not to just shoot him, I guess. Nobody. Yep. Ooh, that's unceremonious. Building the Zek as this unkillable villain god to go out like that? But that's the Reacher I expect. That's the persona he's built. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he survived that. Yeah, it's so bad. A long time ago, and I got away with it. He doesn't get much time, but Joe Sakura really nails this scene. And I thought it was a little superfluous at first, but then I remembered that he did a really bad thing and got away with it. So, remorse win. He only cares about what's right. Look at me when I'm talking to you. If I ever got in trouble again, he'd be there. And you said you aren't a hero. Tom Cruise did not run once in this film. Why does everyone hate Tom Cruise? Is it the Scientology? Is it because he jumped on the couch that one time? I mean, that was weird. But am I Tom Cruise's only fan? Is he not Maverick? Ethan Hunt? Frank Mackey? Nathan Algren? Is the man not Cole Trickle for gosh sakes? And that's not even scratching the surface of the characters he's played. I get a lot of guff from my family and friends about this in my personal life, so I guess I might as well extend that to my virtual life. I really like Tom Cruise. Edge of Tomorrow, also written by this film's director, Christopher McQuarrie, is one of the best sci-fi action movies from the last few years, and he'd already had a more memorable career than 90% of actors. Yes, I will do Edge of Tomorrow, even though it didn't bomb at the box office, it's still extremely underrated. He had to do double shifts on this film because he was filming another movie at the same time. All these women love him, even one who knows she should be terrified of him. I get off work at six. So what is it? He's too short? Well, that brings us to Jack Reacher. Novel fans were, and from what I can gather, are still very upset about Tom Cruise being cast as Jack Reacher. They even created a Facebook page called Tom Cruise is not Jack Reacher. Lee Child describes Jack as 6'5", 250 pounds, which is a stark contrast to Cruise's 5'7". I get it. You read a book, you build this picture in your head. Katniss Everdeen has olive skin and Harry Potter's eyes are green. But if this guy is okay with it, shouldn't you be too? Everyone is entitled to their opinion, and I haven't read the book, so all I can say is that Tom Cruise created an interesting character that strikes fear in my heart, but makes me want to root for him and be him all at the same time. And it's an odd character for film, to say the least. Usually we get to see our protagonist grow and learn over the course of the movie, but Reacher knows it all already. Oh. On paper, that sounds like it would be boring, but the way this film plays out makes us feel like we're inside his head. We know right from the beginning that Barr is innocent, so we get to feel like we're filling in all the puzzle pieces even though we know the truth, just like Reacher does. It makes for a fun ride. Tom Cruise made the character his own. Someone will have to tell me if this Barr scene is in the one-shot book, because it's completely unbelievable if Reacher is 6'5", 250. Now Cruise, he's an underdog. He doesn't look like much, even if his confidence just about makes you wet your pants if you have half a brain. I mean, dogs would know to stay away from that stare. Rosamund Pike plays off Cruz's anti-hero really well and shines in her solo investigation moments. However, the biggest standout was Robert Duvall. The interactions between Reacher and Cash were perfect. Really the only character to match Reacher and mess with him the way that Reacher messes with everyone else. And Duvall kills the Devil May Care attitude. The only guy maybe a little scarier than Reacher was Werner Herzog's The Zek. 
His Siberian prison story is delivered so well you can feel the frostbite. And I'm again going to defend Jai Courtney. He does indifferent assassin, super henchmen more memorably than most. The best thing this film has going for it is something I already mentioned, reminding me of the Pelican Brief. I'd add some other 90s films like Tom Clancy's Patriot Games as well as Sandra Bullock's The Net to the list. It's a return to a simpler time. Pre-smartphones, for some reason. Not a huge reliance on any kind of technology and... Payphones? Where are they finding all these payphones? Even Joe Kramer's unnerving thriller score brings me right back. I took a win off for this, but in the film's defense, it was another deliberate nod to the 80s, 90s boss battles. Possibly even The Outsiders, which is doubly meta. Even the villain. We'd be enough to just Enough. Him. There is no such thing. We take what can be taken. If that's not a line ripped right from the bygone era, it's time for a 90s resurgence. So here's to hoping the sequel follows in those same footsteps. Sadly, it will be without Christopher McQuarrie, the man who made this movie as amazing as it is from pen to lens. If you came in expecting Tom Cruise on a motorcycle, the pacing may disappoint you a bit. It's a slow burn until the first quick fight and all-out chase scene, but when it hits, it's executed perfectly. And on the other side of that, murder mystery conspiracies can be very rote. This one changes it up by giving us the inside track right from the beginning and letting us unravel the truth as we go. Does everyone who isn't Reacher seem to turn their brains off a bit to make sure Reacher shines? Eh, just a tad. I kept thinking about the orgy of evidence in Minority Report. It's a bit of an indictment of our justice system, even if Occam's Razor applies. But when one of the guys trying to solve the mystery ends up being under the bad guy's thumb, it all makes sense in the end. My girl Maria Hill is in the sequel. I'm psyched to see Colby Smulders finally get a role big enough for her talent. And I'm not telling you how to do your jobs, movie guys. But if you really want to put butts in seats, you should definitely drop Let's Go to the Mall into the final Jack Reacher trailer. Just saying, fake Canadian pop stars have proven to win the hearts of Americans time and time again. Remember, you wanted this. Any chance I can look at the evidence? Not at all. Not until you answer some Nice meeting you. Hey. Forest for the trees, detective. It's getting late. Oh. Let's ask. Hey. We should probably go. What?